the stitch width sample starts very similar to the stitch length sample. On a piece of sample fabric, use a ruler and marking pen to draw five lines every one inch. Use the entire length of the sample from the top of the fabric to the bottom. Again, you just need five lines. Ideally, they'd be evenly spaced apart, but as long as there is a distinguishable difference between each line, that's all that matters. Label from left to right, zero, one, two, three, and four, just like shown in the picture. Now, step number three says to make sure your stitch length is at 2.5. Our first line is done with the stitch width of zero. Now when zigzag stitching, we do not back stitch. It holds it in place and usually it's meant to have some other function besides holding the seams together. With zero stitch width, this turns out to be a straight line. So the entire length of your seam and cut off any loose threads that you might find at the beginning of your sample or at the end. Extra little piece of fabric that I'm just going to trim off to make it look nicer. All right, I am now on to step number or line number one. To move my stitch width up to one for my second sample and second line, I'm going to use the stitch width buttons to raise it all the way to one. As I moved it, my needle will change positions in preparation for this new stitch line. So for my second line on this one, Again, I'm not back stitching, but keeping the threads towards the back. And as we sew this one, we will see a slight variation from just a straight line. There's a little bit of a zigzag to it. Go all the way to the end. Cut and trim off any loose threads. and repeat the process again for each additional stitch width. By the time that you hit line number four, you will have a wide zigzag stitch.